Hello everyone. As we have finished history and discovery of atom and Dalton's atomic theory, now we will learn what is inside an atom. To know this, again we need to jump in the past. In 1897, J.J. Thomson, a British physicist, along with his team conducted several experiments using a cathode ray tube, as you can see over here. This cathode ray tube is also known as discharge tube. Before going to know about construction, let's learn some terminologies. Number one is vacuum. Vacuum is a space which is free from everything. This means it's a space from which almost everything is removed, even air. Same like space outside the globe. Second is electrodes. Like wires, these are solid conductors made up of metals like platinum, zinc, etc. There are basically two types of electrodes. First one is cathode, which is negatively charged electrode. And second one is anode, which is positively charged electrode. Number three is beam. A beam is a group of rays of light is called as a beam of light, like a laser light, which is monochromatic light. Number four is phosphors, not phosphorus, it's phosphors. It's a material which glow in dark when exposed to radiation or electron beam. Number fifth is neutral. Neutral is neither a positive charge nor a negative charge. It has zero charge. Understood? Now, let's look at the construction of this experiment. This discharge tube is made up of sealed glass tube and about 15 cm long and 3 cm in diameter. There is a vacuum pump connected to it. This means to carry out the experiment, vacuum is created in the cathode ray tube. Two metal electrodes are fixed at both the ends which are then connected to high power voltage supply. And those two electrodes are namely cathode and anode as we have discussed before. Then a high voltage is applied across the two electrodes at one end of the glass tube. When high voltage is applied, then J.J. Thompson and his team observed a beam of particles to flow from cathode, which is a negatively charged electrode, towards anode, which is a positively charged electrode. To detect the ray, they used a painting material named phosphors, which glows when exposed to radiation. A beam of particles came out of the cathode and traveled through anode. He named that as cathode ray as it originated at cathode and hit the phosphor at far other end of the tube and allow phosphors to glow. As you can see a greenish color over here. But JJ Thompson wanted to know whether these particles are negatively charged or positively charged. To know this, he placed two plates around the cathode ray tube as you can see over here. One plate was positively charged that he placed above the tube and another was negatively charged plate that he placed below the tube. He also placed magnet around the cathode ray tube to check magnetic effect on cathode rays. When the cathode rays passed through these plates, it got deflected towards positively charged plate. By this observation, J.J. Thompson concluded that cathode ray particles are negatively charged particles. As negative attracts positive, like that, cathode rays got attracted towards positively charged plate. He found that cathode ray particles are having very less mass, much lesser than hydrogen atom also. From this observation, he concluded the following points. First, cathode ray is composed of negatively charged particles. Second, he named those negatively charged particles as electrons. And the third one, these cathode ray particles are having very less mass. After this conclusion, 
Dalton's first postulate got rejected. Do you remember what was the first postulate of Dalton's atomic theory? Yes, correct. Atoms are indivisible. Do you know why I kept word indivisible in red color over here? Because it is incorrect. After the discovery of electron within an atom, J.J. Thomson proved that we can divide an atom. So, this cathode ray experiment proved that we can break an atom by applying high voltage power. Now, as J.J. Thomson discovered, cathode ray contains negatively charged particles. But, as we all know, atoms are neutral in natural state. They are neither positive nor negative. This means atom contains equal number of negative charge and positive charge. This led Thomson to propose that atoms must have equal number of positive charge particle along with electrons. If there are 6 electrons in an atom, there must be 6 positively charged particles also. To explain this, Thomson proposed an atom is like a sphere of positive charge and electrons are fixed in it. This model is often called plum pudding model of an atom. Because according to JJ Thomson's description, an atom looks like a plum pudding which is a popular English dessert as you can see here. So this was about JJ Thomson's cathode ray experiment and plum pudding model of an atom. Thank you. Hey guys, I hope you have learned something today. If yes, then click the like button below, comment below, share this video with amazing learners like you, subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so whenever I upload any video, you will be notified. Thank you.